there is no one way to do a listing presentation. One of the things I love about this business is if you interview 10 agents who are really doing a great job, you're going to see 10 different ways of doing something. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Hello, guys. How are you this morning? Is, uh, Let's see. Some people are still hopping on. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dave Robles. I'm a real estate agent here in the LA area. And uh, I've known um, Agent Power Huddle since its inception. Jesse and I go back probably 20 years. Uh, and uh, we met a long time ago uh, at the inception of Tom Ferry when Tom Ferry began coaching. And he asked me to come on and share my listing presentation. So give you a little background on me. I run a team here in LA called Think Real Estate. And uh, we have about 15 agents. We are a very heavy geographic farming team. We focus on finding sellers. Buyers, we feel, are um, they come when you have the listings. Uh, we do not pay for Zillow leads or any kind of uh, buyer leads like that. We just we just list. <laughs> so, who uh, who here considers himself more of a listing agent or or a buyer's agent? Um, okay, cool. listing agent, listing agents, awesome. There is no one way to do a listing presentation. One of the things I love about this business is if you interview ten agents who are really doing a great job, you're going to see ten different ways of doing something. Uh, and that's awesome. There's there's a lot of room for uh, creativity in this business. Um, and uh, my listing presentation came from a disastrous listing appointment I had a few years ago. I went on this listing appointment and it was so bad. I walked out and I thought, shit, I wouldn't even list the house with me. It was awful. I rambled. I I They were bored. I, I didn't get a signature and sure enough, they listed with somebody else. And it was then that I realized I needed to dismantle my listing presentation and just start from scratch. Okay. What I used to use was this like big, like this art display thing that had like all my resources in it. And I would flip the page and I would show them everything that was in the case and it was pretty common back at that time, you know, back in the old days to do that. Um, and then I went to a fully digital piece and I walked in, I bought a new iPad Pro and I did the entire presentation on my iPad and that actually didn't work out, okay? Especially amongst um, older homeowners they just they felt disconnected to me i think because of the ipad can you guys hear me okay by the way all right cool um so the ipad is actually what i was using during the disaster and the problem with the ipad is i walked away with my ipad and i didn't leave them anything i just said here i'm going to send you an email with everything that we just went over and i did i sent them the email but i didn't leave them anything and as I was walking out, I saw like a, a stack of about three other list, uh, agents who went on the pitch, all their material. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should have left something. And I didn't get the list. Okay. But it was a disaster anyway. So I revamped it. Okay. And today I walk in with a box. I walk in with this box. Uh, it's about the size of a shirt box. We have different levels of box. This I call our luxury box. It's about $20. And uh, we have a cheaper version for the non-luxury box. Uh, so we use this if we're going to go on a luxury listing or if it's if I know they're interviewing other agents, I take the nicer box. 
Okay. So right away, I walk in, I've got a little satchel, little leather satchel, which my iPad is in, and this box. And immediately, it's kind of intriguing. They're like, what's up with the box, right? I'm like, oh, we got a lot of fun stuff in there. And I'm going to assume this is a one, one stop listing appointment, meaning I haven't yet seen the house. I'm going to walk in, I'm going to see the house, I'm going to present, I'm going to close, I'm going to walk out with the listing agreement signed. That's the goal. A two-step in our area is where you go, you look at the house, and then you come back for a second appointment with your CMA and your marketing proposal. Um, I do that sometimes if I'm in an area that I'm unfamiliar with or if the house is like really different, unique, funky, it's got additions that I didn't know about. Um, but generally for this for this call, this is going to be a one one shop deal, one stop. Okay. So get there. I, I asked to tour the house. I take a look at the house. I asked them questions. Of course, I've already prequaled them. I know where they're going. I know why they're go why they want to sell. Hopefully I have some idea what they want to sell their home for, but oftentimes when you ask them, they say, Well, you know, that's what you're here for, you know. Um and uh, I look at the house. I try and find out what their favorite part of the house is, why they love the house, why they bought the house. What was it that drew them to this house? Because um, they, they do like to talk about that. And, you know, we kind of infer that that's the next buyer might also like those things. Okay. So then we sit down. Um, and the first thing I pull out is the what's called a property profile here at LA. And it is the tax record of the house. And it has the square footage, the lot size, the bedroom count. All I'm doing is confirming that that stuff is right. Say, so, okay, I've got the property profile here. It says you're three, you know, three bedrooms, two baths, 1,800 square feet, 9,000 square foot lot. That seems pretty accurate to me. Do you know of any changes? No. Okay. We put that away. Then the next thing I do is I bring out the Zillow estimate. Okay. And... I say, okay, um, we don't we don't believe Zillow, but buyers do look at Zillow. And right now, Zillow says your house is worth a million five forty three. And what are your thoughts about that? Now, this is very handy if they didn't give you an idea of how much they wanted to sell their house for, because you're going to know real fast if they say, "Oh, that's bullshit. My house is worth more than that." You know, Zillow, that's not right. My house is worth more than that. Or, wow, that's a lot, you know? So then at least you kind of get an idea of what their opinion is based on that price on this estimate. Okay. And um, then I go ahead and understand that. I say, okay, well, that's just Zillow. That's just Zillow's opinion. That is not the value of your home. I like to say Zillow is 20% wrong 80% of the time. They usually chocolate. Okay, then we get into the meat. Now, I'm going to share in the chat a link that has all the material I'm about to go over with you. Okay, so let me let me get that together here. Um, I just said it too many last night. There it is. Me. Okay. Where's our chat? You spent screen whiteboard notes or chat. Okay. Okay. I just put a link into the chat to everyone. It's a Google Drive. You should be able to open it up. And um, try not to go too deep in that now so you're kind of staying with me. One of the items in there, I mean, this is kind of the most important part of the um, presentation, is called the listing, excuse me, agent interview notes. Okay. This is this completely changed my listing presentation. Um, it is the eight items that a homeowner 
wants to discuss on a listing presentation. Well, what this does is it creates the framework for our conversation. So I'll usually say it like this. You know, Mr. Homeowner, uh, in my years of experience selling homes in our neighborhood, there are eight topics that homeowners want to discuss. Number one is home value, okay? And if you notice on the form, which is in the link, it says home value. Get a little closer. Ta -da. It has those little bubbles next to it, okay? There's, it's a scale of one to 10. It's got a little thing for comments. I said, uh, RGD. Uh, what was that thing called? I don't see it in the agent interview notes. I don't think it's in there, but that's fine. All right. Um, should be everything. Um, okay. So don't see it. Well, okay. I'm going to get it in there real quick. Let me pull it up real quick. It's kind of important. Okay. One second. Bear with me. So the agent interview notes are about what is, um, what we're going to talk about. And the first one is home value. Okay. I'll find it. And the second one is time frame. How long is it going to take to sell this house? The third one is marketing. The fourth one is agent qualification. The fifth one is what advice can I give you to improve the value? The next one is what happens if the house doesn't sell in 30 days? And the next one is what your experience will be like when you hire me? And the last one is what's most important to you in the sale of your home? So those are the items we're going to talk about. Again, house value, time frame, marketing, agent qualification, advice to improve value, what happens if the house doesn't sell and what your experience will be like when you hire me. So then that sheet's in front of them and there's a little scale there on one to 10. And I said, so what we're going to do is I want to know where do you want to begin the conversation? Okay. And I let them choose the topic. And this is important because now they're really involved in the presentation and it's, it's less of a presentation and more of a conversation. And they almost always start with home value. Okay. Now there's a little scale there from one to 10. And I ask them, after we talk about that subject, I want you to grade me on a scale of one to 10. Okay. If I answered all your questions and you're super satisfied, maybe I got a 10. And if you still have a lot of questions or if you're unsure of something, maybe I didn't. Maybe I got a seven or a six. Now, the idea is I want to make sure that they are with me every step of the, of the, uh, of the process. So I said, where would you like to begin the conversation? They almost always say home value. Okay. Then I break out my iPad. It's a big iPad, an iPad Pro. And I go over the CMA. I'm not going to go over that here because y'all know what a CMA is. Okay. And we start going over the comps. Ooh. However, you do that in your area is great. Um, I like to, 
I tell them there's, you know, seven or eight comparable sales in here and there's a few active properties. All our houses are very different from one another. We don't have like tract homes or anything. So it's very hard to find a quote like model match that doesn't exist out here. But I will tell them one or two of these sales tells us about 80% of the story of the value of your home. And the others are kind of like supporting characters in the movie. Okay. And uh, they dig that. We go over. That gives me permission to kind of focus on a couple of the comps and kind of gloss over a few of the others. Because I don't want to spend freaking 30 minutes talking about comps. Okay. So we try and go through the comps very quickly. And then I'll try and get them to tell me how much they think the house is worth. So based on the information here, we know which house do you think is closest to yours? Where do you think the value fits in? Looking at this, are the actives, which right now I think the actives are almost more important than the sold. It's how do you fit within the actives? Okay, right now there's four houses. This one's a little bigger. This one's a little smaller. This one has a pool. You know, oftentimes, Mr. Seller, there are homes that sell and then there are homes that help other homes sell. Okay. And for example, if you list your home at this price, well, you're going to help these guys sell. Okay. And if you list your home here, well, they're going to help you sell. And I, I want them to understand that. Okay. Okay. Then the next, the next question, for example, will be time frame. In time frame, I break out a calendar. Yeah. And I print up like six months of one page is per month. So I'll have like right now, I'll have a March, April, May, June, July, August, September calendar. Okay. Each one on a page. And I'll say, let's talk about time frame. When would you like the house to be gone? Like, like you're moving out and they'll say August 1st. Okay. Whatever. I'll say, okay, well, in order to have your home sold on August 1st, then I start counting back and I write down on the calendar, close of escrow. You know, let's say we have a 30 day escrow. That means we need to be in escrow by July 1st. Okay. And that means we need to um, be looking at offers at the end of June, which means we need to be on the market uh, and have open houses in the middle of June. And then we need to uh, launch the listing probably in early June. And now we're talking about photography and staging needed to take place at the end of May. And this really gives them uh, a good indication of what's involved in getting their home sold. Because I think most homeowners greatly underestimate the amount of effort it's going to take them to get their home ready for sale, at least in our area. Okay. And they might think that it's a quick process when actually they're going to spend probably the good part of a month or so getting the home ready. Now, if the house is vacant, it's actually easier because we'll just paint it, stage it, and move it. Um, but when they, they live in it, I sometimes bring in my stager who helps them declutter and stuff like that because presentation here is really important. Okay. Um, so that's the time frame conversation. Now, I have had situations where they'll say, I want to have this thing done in May, and then we count back, and I'm like, wow, based on your your need, we need to like shoot your house next week. And they're like, oh my God. And I'll get a, I'll get a signature on the spot. Because they just came to this realization, the light went off, that they don't have as much time as they thought. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the time frame conversation. Next is marketing. Now, I have got this box, and every time they want to see something, I'm pulling the material out of the box. Okay. So if it's a really expensive listing, if it's a luxury listing, I'm going to pull out my luxury brochure. If it's a one bedroom condo, you know, I'm probably not going to pull out my luxury brochure. But I get to curate this box for the listing presentation. Okay. Let's say they want to talk about marketing. Well, then I'm going to pull out what we call marketing, um, which is showcasing your home. Okay. This is, I'm sure. And it's got 
the importance of photography, videography, Matterport, yada, yada, yada. The back end talks about our website reach, which is decently robust um, for a real estate website. And then we get into social media marketing, okay? I want to pepper this video with specific script and lines that I use that I think land really well. Like I'll say, you know, social media marketing is something a lot of agents don't understand. In fact, when I'm talking about marketing, I kind of get excited and I say, did you know that in order to get a real estate license, a realtor has to take 160 hours of education and then pass a test here in California? And not one of those hours talks about marketing. Not one, zero. It's not part of getting a real estate license, yet it's the most important part of making sure your home sells for the most money. And they're usually like, yeah, okay. So then when it goes to social media, I'll say, most realtors think that if they take a selfie in front of your house and post it on their Facebook page, that they're using social media to sell your home. But the reality is social media is a really powerful marketing tool if you know how to use it. So then I'll break out our social media platform and talk about specific um, ads we've done to get home sold. Like this one here, we went viral with a tag of, would you drive 15 minutes to save $400,000? And it talks about how we don't market a home to the local area. In LA, for example, I'll market a house in Glendale, but I'll market, I'll sell a house in Glendale and I'll market that house over in the west side of LA because that's how buyers come. Buyers start, they want to live over in Santa Monica, but they freaking can't afford it. So they kind of move east. Okay. And LA moves, migrates east. Like we usually say, if you can't afford your neighborhood, get in a car and drive east until the prices get better. Um, and that's how LA works. So we market to buyers not in the surrounding area. They love that, okay? I tell them any local realtor can put a sign on your house and get the buyers that are looking all the time for the new houses in your area. I said, that's low hanging fruit. We've got to go outside this pool and find the buyers that are going to pay you the most money and they're usually not living in Glendale, okay? So we talk about marketing. Then I'm going to show them examples of brochures. This is the new piece that we just put together that I really like. It's called our last 100 listing sales. Okay. And the, re the results of our last 100 sales, they sold in an average of 18 days. They sold for an average of nine and a half percent over asking. 81 of them sold for over asking. 10 of them sold for exactly asking and nine of them sold for less than asking. And they'll usually say, well, why did those nine sell for less? And I'll say, well, not every homeowner wants to price their home to sell. A lot of homeowners want to price it high and, and give themselves negotiating room to come down. It's, it's your home. You can do that, you know, but with that comes a price reduction usually. And uh, when we talk about pricing, I make it very clear to them. I don't care how much they want, what I don't care what strategy they want to use. There's three strategies. Okay. Number one, you can price it for the market value. If the house is worth a million dollars, price it for a million dollars. You should have offers in the first couple of weeks for about a million dollars. If the house is worth a million dollars and you want to give yourself negotiating room and price it for a million one or a million one fifty, you can do that, but know it's going to sit and know you're probably going to help a couple other houses sell and you may have to reduce it to eventually find your buyer. That's just another strategy. We call it aspirational pricing. Or there's event pricing where you can price it lower, attract multiple offers and sell it for over the asking price. I work with clients that choose all, any one of those three and I can work with you however you want to price your home unless it's outrageously overpriced, okay? So I don't want to alienate it. Most of my clients like the idea of going a little low and getting multiples and selling it for over the asking. I like to tell a lot of stories on my listing presentation. I'll tell a story of how, how easy it is to, under, to overprice a house. For example, we had a home that we thought was worth about a million, 
$1,430,000. And we priced it. The client wanted to price it at one four eight. We did. It sat. No offers. And then finally they got they got a little anxious. They said, what do you want to do? I said, let me take it off the market. Let me put it back on for a million three ninety five, which we did. We got seven offers and we sold it for one million four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And I, you know, I think you might want to ask yourself, why didn't buyers come to the table when it was a million four eighty? Well, that's just not how it worked in LA at that time. Everybody assumed that everything was selling over the asking price. So when they saw a million four eighty five, they thought, well, they obviously want one five, and I'm not going to pay one five, so they just ignore the house. So it's easy to overprice a house. But again, if their strategy is to price high and come down, I would say maybe one out of 10 of my clients do that. Um, I don't like it. Okay. Then we'll go, what else would you like to discuss? Agent qualifications. In agent qualifications, I'll usually bring out these items here, these case studies. I'm going to try and go quickly here. These case studies talk about how we took expired listings and sold them for over the asking price of what they were previously listed for, okay? Um, and then you have advice to improve value. That's usually decluttering, staging, a little bit of paint, some eye, uh, some repairs that might be needed. Um, and then what happens if the house doesn't sell in 30 days, okay? Well, is that by design, meaning... Is it because you chose the higher price and you, you we know that you're going to have to build in price reductions? Or is it an issue that the house is having? Normally what we do is we take the house off the market for a day, like not even for a day, for an hour. And we put it back on with a new photo, new text, new life, and we launch the listing again. We can do that in LA. I know some MLSs may not allow you to, but luckily we can here. Um. And then the last one is, what's your experience will be like when you hire me, which is, you know, yes, I'm the team leader of a team. We have 15 agents, but when you need me, you call me, I'm your agent. You're not going to get passed on to uh, a junior agent unless I'm there on the listing with a junior agent and then we're a team. And then we're like, and you know, one of us will be showing your home and because I can't be everywhere all the time. Um, so it kind of depends what the situation is going to be. Um, do you guys have any questions real quick? So I want to be conscious of your time. I know we have 30 minutes, so that was it. Yes. What was the lower pricing called? Event pricing. Event pricing, market pricing, and aspirational pricing. And where do you get your boxes? Um, good question. Um, like home goods or something like that. Where you know, I think we them online called Big So Box of Sweden. B I G S O, Big So Box of Sweden. I'm not sure. That's who makes the box. I'm not sure where my wife actually buys them. Uh, she gets them online somewhere. Probably Amazon. <laughs> they have everything. Yeah. So our cheap box looks like this. Okay, it's not bad. I used to use it. You know, all the time, and then I just want to upgrade. Those are about three dollars a box, or maybe two dollars a box. And the nice box is like really, really nice. Okay, now when I'm going to go for the listing, uh, for the signature, it's pretty simple. It's do you have any questions before we take care of the paperwork? Okay, and then they'll usually say yes. How much is your commission? Notice commission's not on this list, and then we'll have the commission conversation if it comes up. Honestly, I don't bring it up. And it probably comes up maybe 60% of the time, 70% of the time. It's probably going to come up a lot more with the news that's going on, uh, which is fine. But before Friday, we used to mostly take 6% commissions where I would keep 3.5% and pay out 2.5%. That's probably all changing. That's fine. Um, but we'll roll with it. Um any other questions? Okay. Um, I will have my... You're going to get to my mute, but uh, how big was your team, did you say? 15. 
That's fantastic. Good job. Yeah, 15 agents and about six admin. How many listings are you selling per year? About uh, actual like listings that we sign, 65 and uh, buyer sales like another 45, 50. That's down a little bit. A lot. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, you know, whatever, what I like about this box is it's very different and it's very theatrical. It builds a lot of, uh, intrigue when you walk in, they don't know what's in the box. And I like to pull things out. It's very tactile. I hand it to them. They hold it. They look through it. So it really has a flow to it. That's more of a conversation. And there's a lot of sharing and collaboration on that kitchen table instead of just me presenting like a talking head video. Okay. Which I, I don't feel connects well to, to the consumer. So, all right, guys, that's it for me. I I'm going to add items to that Dropbox link. I Paul or that Google link. I apologize that the agent interview notes was not in there, but I'll make sure that's in there. Um, so if you look back to it, it will be okay. See y'all. Thank you. Well done. Again. Bye. <laughs> Do you leave the box? Yes, I leave the box. <laughs> and I tell them that they get to put all their escrow paperwork in the box uh, so they can keep it in a safe place. Good, good question. Sorry about that. And I can hang out if you have questions, by the way. John and what so waiting. Hi, Dave. Hi. Um, so do you do any commercial or is it just residential? We do a little bit of commercial. We just sold a church actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Yeah. Do you have any tips for um commercial uh listing versus a residential? What kind of commercial? Uh like retail office. Hmm. What do you mean by tips? Tips to get the listings or tips to market the listings? Um, so I'm a newer agent <laughs> and I have a, a client who apparently loves me and he is referring me to someone else who is also wanting to sell a listing. So I've never sold a commercial listing. And so um, I'm having a meeting with them to, you know, I guess interview but i'm not I, I don't know anything about the property i don't have an address are you taking a commercial agent with you i am not i probably would half of a listing is better than 100 percent of no listing um you know here in la depending on the type of commercial like that type of office building would not fly in our mls very well we'd have to upload it to like loopnet or costar um, yeah. which is a whole different bag of uh, you know, of tools there, but yeah, I'm part of the CBA. So, I mean, part of CBA. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I do enough commercial to really be a lot of help to you. Okay. That's fair. Thank cool. you. Anybody else? All right. Let me know if you, if you guys ever need me. I'm in LA. I'm easy to find. Dave Roblitz, Think Real Estate, and uh, happy to help. Okay. Take care. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.